Welcome to the behind the scenes of Iris. This took six months of development and there's been some other months as well uh, to the advanced build we've seen in the earlier footage. But for the first time we're going to see the prototype build which is the testing of the basic mechanics, experimenting and also introducing the first set of art assets into the game. I hope you enjoy. So if you took a bit of a time machine and went into the start of the Iris world then this would be the prototype build. As you can see placeholder accepts are the first thing you'd notice as well as the main girl being a different art asset there's a lot of differences in the way the girl looks. As you can see you can't pick up the squares at the moment. You can jump along and slowly be able to see a picture of how it got built together. So the uh, block set 4 gets merely uh, squares because probably the art hadn't got in at that time. We can suit those down and jump across. So this serves the building blocks into an indie game. I hope you really appreciate because this never really gets sewn really as much. And then we can get, move them blocks out. Get rid of this block and it moves a placeholder platform across. And there we go, the first prototype build. And as you can see with Kings again, this is the advanced prototype. So things started to get in like the captors and different effects like here they were experimenting with kind of like old footage effects. From here instead of the shooting stars we had blue glows. It kind of reminded me of souls from a GBA game. Here we go, we've got the cat point in and we've got an early adaption of the monsters. So as you can see, this is the game in starting to build. So you can see the exciting work that they've started to develop. An indie game isn't just all about the programming and gameplay. It's also about the art and the audio and everything else in between. And as you can see, things slowly start to build up. There's enemies with one health bar or two healths. And they had more ideas as they went along with the eyes and the art style. The background uh, changed quite considerably. Uh, player feedback was it was quite similar to another PS3 title. Alright, here we go. And it drops a blue orb again. So as you can see, the framework of the game uh, changed quite considerably. New features got added as the build went on but the general idea stays the same and that's very nice. Basically the idea is to expand upon what you've already got but try and not feed to creep that's always what I've been told as a game uh, developer as well. I am myself a game developer as well I'm building some at the moment in Unity and coming along with that outlook when doing indie playthroughs has really helped me uh, show you another side of the gaming world like we're doing today. I don't think we can actually kill this guy so I'm going to leave it there. Oh that one actually is trying to kill me but at least I can try and get out of the way they've just there. Uh, and here we go, I've made a platform come across and we can slowly get out. So that's been the advanced prototype. So this is the first play of all words and that got released to the public. But basically this is the title screen and as you can see things got added straight away. Different level now and we've got to the actual uh, kind of uh, graphics that were featured in the version that we played earlier on. Although there's some changes that got added. The enemies are now uh, revealed but with their eyes open without you having to shoot the eyes. But that got added later on add a bit more gallings into the game. There's uh, still the puzzles so now puzzles have been added with them gates as we saw in the first uh, videos that I did. Visual effects have started to be added. Particles have been added to the flower gifts there. Crystal ice is now falling and creates an obstacle. 
So there's more and more ideas as the prototypes get on and on, right? More of the ideas that we saw in the start get added and the game is starting to get better and better. With people's feedback, which is something highly important when creating a game, it helped the game to become better and have more features. A lot of the artwork is now starting to be added, although there's no effect around the bow, although that gets added later on. There's more enemy types from the two-headed dog thing that I talked about on the first videos to the kind of pincer kind of enemies over in that direction and these kind of I don't know how to describe them but kind of annoying floor enemies there we go that's an accurate description of them so yeah that's been the next prototype and I'll show you the next one now So there's the alpha build and what alpha means is in public testing now. This is where people come along, give it feedback and help the game become better and do bug fix and do all them kind of awesome things the public do towards game developers. As you can see things have started to change. There's now trees that have got this kind of rainbow kind of effect, although it looks a lot different from the first one. There's now buttons. Ad advancing the actual storyline and controls to help the user along. This is a UI and this is very important when creating a game. Allowing for clear instruction to the user of how to go around the game is very vital when creating games. It allows for a deeper user interface and understanding and that's very nice. I'm actually going to seek my sister there in the game. So as you can see the story is a uh, bit different, although now it's added as well, the story is now added, which is absolutely awesome. The player kind of involvement in the game of how he feels or she or he feels in the game is very important. That kind of user experience is something game developers really need to get right and this game in the end got absolutely brilliant. But as you can see, it's starting to add the features that allow for that user experience. Things like the bow is a lot better in smooth action, and the controls have been added to make it a very nice user experience. Alright, there we go, picked up the kind of shooting star. As well as that, stuff like the art and sound have been enhanced, and that all adds to the user experience. And get stop that guy and jump over. All the background effects are starting to resemble the playthrough we've just done on Monday last Tuesday. And here we go. Things have been starting to get added, such as these gameplay features and enemies. Things have slowly started to get quite nice now. Particle effects have been added and this cave puzzle has been added so they are starting to think about puzzles now which was a very nice feature in the full uh, game we've just played as again the full game isn't just full just yet I guess what I'd add that in so now we can open the gate but that's been the alpha build and lastly we're going to show you the final build before uh, the one we just played So now after all the feedback has been collected and put in to make this kind of product we've got the build just before the build we played so this shouldn't be too different. And it's all nice and new effects on the speech as you can see the UI on this is very nice. There's now particles and more effects. Instead of water droplets we now have flowers. So there's little kind of decisions that get made to enhance the user experience. The leaves are nice and new, more colours in the leaves, although they get smoothed out in the next elite. And now the darkness kind of effects is very nice. So now this is elite just before the one we did on Monday. As you can see there's not too much difference but the noticeable differences are little 
but enhance the user experience greatly. From the particle effects to the little kind of design decisions make the product very nice to play. As ever, the link is in the description below, so please check it out for the newest version. As again, this is not the final release. Right, and things have started to get a lot better. There's now particles when the enemy is defeated and new glowy effects. So as you can see, the game is play is a lot more enhanced as it went along. The decisions that the team made have been absolutely great to enhance the user experience of the product. So as you can see, this is actually giving you a very nice kind of different side to what we normally do. Instead of playing games, we are still playing games. We've actually now kind of took out what it means and actually defined what it means to uh, fully build a game. Here we go. And we've left with the final product, what we played on Monday and Tuesday. Please be sure to check that video out. So as you can see, a lot of things have been added. A lot of minor details have been added, like the graphical tweaks to the sound, to the actual glowy effects from this uh, cat point. Little things like that add up to a massive difference in a game. And as a game developer, you need to think about all these things when creating your own games. What would the user feel like? And what would the user want to be improved to create a better game for yourself? And these have obviously done that, gone through the steps to create a more expansive user experience and user feels. User feels being a new word. But yeah, that have been Lone Wolf and this has been Games Defined. I hope you've enjoyed Iris Week. Please enjoy the other videos if you haven't done already of Iris and all other work as well. And please be sure to congratulate the developers if you like the product and download their product and support them. Because without developers like this, we wouldn't have experiences like this. And we wouldn't push the boundaries and what games mean when in indie development. Because it kind of brings you that journey. And, and not many games do that, other than indie games. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please put comments, likes and whatever. I hope you've enjoyed.